Hi there, I'm Elgan Hir Thomas and I am a professional opera singer. Now, last year I applied for a Royal Philharmonic Society grant from then brand new Enterprise Fund. Now, this fund was set up in order to support artists, um, musicians of kind of all stripes, um, to further or continue something that they had started during the COVID-19 period, sort of the main lockdown periods. Um, and my application was based on something that I had started doing via another organisation who sadly sort of no longer exist, but it was Zoom concerts. So uh, I was, I gave over 120 of these concerts over the entire time and they ranged from 15 minutes to sometimes an hour long. And uh, these would be for birthdays, anniversaries, a ton at Christmas. I mean, really, uh, I think I did in December, I think I did over 50, uh, over 50 concerts. That's December 2020. Um, so it was a very, very intense month. And I think in total, I may have sang sort of about over a hundred Ness and Dormers, uh, La Donna Morbile, uh, Oh Holy Nights. It was intense, but it was mega rewarding because it kept me singing, most importantly, in a time where, of course, no one was doing that much. Um, and it also can, uh, kept me connected to an audience, which, you know, before the pandemic, I think a lot of artists may have sort of underestimated how much we need it you know without an audience we are fairly redundant um you know it's i do my practice in this room but you know it's it gets a bit dull when it's every single day for two years uh and no one there to hear it so as i say i was giving these concerts and i thought so th these were for anybody but on the odd occasion um i gave some concerts direct into care homes either for individuals in their rooms or for the entire home. And they sort of put me on their TV. And um, uh, we know so much now about how much music uh, has an effect, a really positive effect on those suffering with dementia, Alzheimer's and other illnesses too, of course. So the main part of my application was I wanted to do more of that. Um, and that wasn't just, you know, during COVID. It's something that I am still doing and I really, really want to continue doing it in between my uh, opera and concert career, as it were. Just sort of, you know, if I can do it in between jobs and things, it really, um, it would be a really good thing. Well, that's what I thought. Um, and it has completely turned out that way. So the grant was mainly to pay for new equipment because what I was finding was I was recording some of the concerts on Zoom. It's a great thing that you can do. And the sound quality was okay. It wasn't amazing. So I thought I could really do with a new laptop because mine was getting really slow. It wasn't connecting to the internet all that well anymore. Um, the camera was old. Uh, and also the inbuilt microphone was naff basically really not very good at all so it all sounded quite tinny um which is not so bad if you're singing lighter repertoire but when it's opera it's really not terribly good so i applied for the grant um was successful uh, in my application and so i was able to buy a new laptop better camera really good connection to the internet much faster just generally better the one i'm filming myself on right now um i also bought myself a new external microphone um which is right here this fancy thing uh which is really good it also has a, a really good inbuilt sort of reverb thing that i can set up so that it adds a better sound to um all my concerts i also do pre-recorded concerts and so for that reason i also bought new uh, software for um, the laptop so that I could edit and make the sound better and make it look a little bit nicer and uh, all those things. 
So, um, yeah, so I thought in this video I would share with you some of the concerts that I've given. Uh, the main target of them so far um, has been people with disabilities who can't leave home, so they can't get to the opera or to concerts or, or you know, or to, to concerts of any music genre. Um, those who have never seen opera before, so they're looking so looking for a new experience um, or never heard live. I know it's virtual, but I really am here. So um, live opera singing in the hope that, you know, I, I consider it part of my job as an opera singer to try and find a new audience um, along with the companies that I work for to make sure that we're always sort of pushing uh, that um, that envelope so we can find new younger audiences um to come and watch us uh so that was part of it and of course um care homes as well so i'll share some of those concerts with you uh since doing the grant i've done over 30 another 30 of these concerts um, I, i'm not going to share all of those with you um but uh, i hope you enjoy the sort of the bits of the concerts that i've um i've chosen and i'll also give you just now after this introduction i'll also give you a little demo of the difference between using an inbuilt microphone and using this one. Uh, okay, so um, thanks very much and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you. So I thought I'd just show you the difference between the inbuilt microphone, which is what I'm currently being recorded on now, so you should probably already hear a small difference, uh, and then I'll switch to the new external microphone. So the song I actually sang the most um, in all these concerts, I would say, is probably Happy Birthday. So I thought I'd sing that for you now. So this is with the inbuilt microphone. <laughs> exactly the same thing again, but I'm just going to switch over to the other microphone. So I didn't only get in touch with care homes and individuals where I live now in Greater Manchester, but I also wanted to do some concerts for uh, those in North Wales, so my sort of home home, as it were. Um, so this next clip is from a concert I gave to the Glanros care home in Anismon uh, in Anglesey. Uh, and this one was particularly lovely because I was able to do uh, lots of Welsh language repertoire. Um, some of these songs I've not sung in uh, a fair few years. So um, this is a clip of me singing what I've been told was their favourite song, um, Mavanwi. So uh, enjoy. Diolch uh, fawr. Nesa dwi am gan ni unawd Cymraeg fach arall y tro yma gan Joseph Parry. The next song I'm going to sing is another Welsh classic one you might know even better than the last one by Joseph Parry. And I've, um, I've been told that you particularly enjoy this one. Uh, so this is Mavanwi.
Now, last year, I, um, like a lot of people during lockdown, had been eating quite badly and not exercising as much as I should. So I joined a very, very local, fantastic gym, which is just a five minute walk down the road. Um, and it's such a lovely community they have there. Um, it's all very supportive, um, which I need because <laughs> finding motivation is not always easy for me when it comes to uh, exercise and fitness. But um, it's been really, you know, without sounding too dramatic, it's sort of been a life changing thing, um, which is a huge testament to their, to their commitment to getting me in that gym. Uh, so I thought what I would do uh, is offer them a concert. So to the to the guys who run it, but also to some of the other um, members. Uh, and they really fit into the category of have never been to an opera, probably never heard an opera singer singing live. Um, so I thought it would be a really nice thing. So I sort of gave them an introduction to opera concert. So lots of popular pieces and one or two that maybe they'd never heard before. Um, so, yeah, so I thought I'd offer it. Um, I'd offer this concert for them and they really enjoyed it. So, uh Here's a little clip of that one. Is um, the surname of Floria Tosca, who is a um, she's a singer in Rome. The whole opera is set in Rome, uh, and it's proper, proper tragic. All three lead characters die at the end of this opera. So I think opera is quite famous for having people die, but honestly, it's not all of them. But this one, absolutely. Uh, and this, but this aria is very, very happy. So it happens in the first five minutes of the opera. And basically Mario Cavaradossi is a painter. So Puccini was really famous for not writing about princes, queens, kings, dukes. He really wrote about normal people. That was what one of the things that was most different about him. And believe me, you know lots of Puccini's music. You just might not know it by his name. Um, but in this aria, he's painting uh, a picture of a gorgeous blonde lady. And what he's basically saying is he's comparing the beauty of this person he's painting to that of his dark haired beauty, Floria Tosca. So from the opening of Tosca, this is Recondita Armonia.
So just for a change of scenery, I thought I'd tell you about the, the next concert um, from a break during rehearsals uh, in London. And it's very, very sunny, so forgive the sunglasses, but I'd be like this if I wasn't wearing them. Um, so this next one was a really interesting one because I had already given uh, this lady who, um, who I won't name for um, the sake of privacy, but uh, she's in her 90s and is suffering um, with um, very advanced uh, dementia. But I'd given a concert to her before uh, during the lockdowns with all my old equipment um, and the care home's Wi-Fi signal was particularly bad that day. So it was a little bit of a sort of uh, a mixed experience. Um, so I offered to do another and I'm really pleased to say that the Wi-Fi connection was really good and the sound quality just so much better. However, <laughs> I made a little error uh, on the Zoom call and I chose the wrong view. So you'll see this concert um, as just them with me as a sort of voice over, uh, if you like. Um, but still, the, the concert the concert went really well. And um, yeah, I think that uh, I think that she enjoyed it uh, very much. So here it is. Now, one of the people who got uh, in touch with me in response to my uh, post on the local Facebook group uh, was Sandra. Now, Sandra last year um, had done some amazing work uh, in getting together elderly local residents, getting them all together in a room uh, to socialise because over the pandemic, they'd been really isolated, hadn't seen lots of their friends, and probably were very lonely. So Sandra did this amazing thing when it was safe to do so, of course, following all the guidelines. And um, yeah, so Sandy's Angels was born and uh, it was so popular that they've done events ever since and continue to do so. Uh, but I was lucky enough to be part of their Valentine's Day uh, event, which was for couples where one of whom or possibly both were suffering from Alzheimer's uh, and or dementia. And so I put together a little program of love songs, pre-recorded, uh, made it look all pretty, I hope, and uh, sent it over to them. So uh, here's a little clip from that concert that I gave. And there's also a little clip of, um, of them actually watching uh, the concert. So um, yes, here's the concert I did for Sandy's Angels, Valentine's Day.
And that concludes uh, this little vlog, uh, if you like, of just some of the concerts uh, I've given. And the work continues. Um, I'm not planning on stopping this anytime soon. Um, I hope I can continue doing it for a very, very long time. Uh, I really enjoy it. And I think it's uh, important that I keep these connections with the people I have given concerts for and that I can go back and do more. Um, we all had so much time during um, during the sort of the, the main lockdowns of the pandemic to be able to do this sort of thing. Um, and whilst my time is now more limited, uh, I, I still will be able to do these at weekends, on days off, on breaks between contracts. So, um, yeah, so just a huge thank you to the Royal Philharmonic Society for their support for the grant um, because uh, it's made a huge, huge difference to the quality of um, these online concerts, uh, to the quality that I can offer. And um, yeah, uh, it's fabulous work and I'm really enjoying it. So um, that's all from me. Lots of love.